Nicole Everett here with Conversations with Nicole, and we are at Madison Social in College Town in Tallahassee, Florida. And today we're talking performing arts with the artistic director of the Tallahassee Ballet, Mr. Tyrone Brooks. Welcome, Tyrone. Thank you, a pleasure being here. So Tyrone, Tallahassee Ballet, I had the great opportunity of attending the Rhythm Explosion this spring. My first time at the Tallahassee Ballet and I was blown away. It was a great fusion of ballet and jazz and I just thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, thank you. And I think what's important is that clearly you were engaged. Yes. And that's my philosophy is I don't believe in going to the theater to be entertained, especially when it comes to dance because it's physical. Mm -hmm. um, it can also become, it can be personal as well. But once, you, once if you leave the audience you leave the theater and somehow some performers have touched you, you've been engaged and yes. that's what it's about. Okay, so Tallahassee Ballet, tell me about it. Well, the company is over 40 years old mm -hmm. and I came on board in 2013, mm -hmm. and um, which was a great year for me because I had the entire year to do some assessments in regards to learning the culture of the Tallahassee Valley as well as the culture of, of Tallahassee mm -hmm. City itself and to, and to also to meet people and, le and do some discovering and one of the things that I did learn that um, there's so much culture here mm -hmm. and Tallahassee Valley alone is the, is the best kept secret. So it was my responsibility to see what I can bring to the table that will um, enhance the company. And one of the main things that I saw was to change the repertoire. Okay. Not to totally uh, dismiss the history, mm -hmm. um, but to make it more uh, marketable. In that sense, is is regards to making it more diverse. Mm -hmm. The company's history is to do the classical ballets, which is great. But the time has changed. Mm -hmm. In order for us to survive within the market, mm -hmm. we need to change with the with the with the market as well. And also, too, as the artistic director, it is my responsibility to challenge the dancers and to also give them a different platform in which to work. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it will make them marketable to be able to dance in many different styles. Mm -hmm. So my 2014-15 season, I brought in some wonderful choreographers to set something new on the company, okay. which they absolutely ate it up. And I, always, and I believe that, you know, if you give them the material, they'll take it and run with it. Mm -hmm. But giving them that material, because now when you go to audition for any, for any dance company, you have to be able to do more than just ballet. Mm, wow, so diversity. How difficult was that change to make within the company? Well, I think because, you know, I think one of the mistakes that people make when you're new to the organization, especially for the artistic director, it's baby steps. Mm -hmm. You've got to do baby steps because the, organ, the, the community are, and the patrons are accustomed to a certain way. Once you learn, once you earn the trust yes. of the organization, mm -hmm. you earn the trust of the community and your patrons, then you can go a little further, a little further. But just throwing something in all of a sudden mm -hmm. can be very difficult and very challenging. Okay. So how has the community received the diversity that yes. you've, or the baby steps that you've the baby taken. Step. Yes, they have. They and received you know, it well. And, it, and it's about audience, and de audience development. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time because it's, this is all new, especially for spring. In our spring performance, the company normally does the classicals, like mm -hmm. the, the Cinderella's and the Sleeping Beauties. But now we're doing a diverse program. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's, there's a little bit of something for everyone. And I like to go to a performance and say, hey, this is great. There's a variety. It's it's a, it's an appetizer. So you have your classical, your neoclassical, and you have your contemporary, and you have your jazz. So therefore, there's always something on that program for someone. I like that because again, I think people think of ballet and they think of a set type of format. 
set type of music and to you know show that there's something there for everyone is very important. Absolutely. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to talk more about the Tallahassee Ballet. Stay tuned for more conversation. Welcome back to Conversations with Nicole. If you're just joining us, we're here at Madison Social in College Town with my special guest, the artistic director with the Tallahassee Ballet, Ty Tyrone Brooks. Tyrone. Pleasure. So before we broke, you were telling me about the diversity component that you know you kind of instituted baby steps wise. Um, you know. I noticed when I did ex um, experience the rhythm explosion that there, weren't, there weren't a whole lot of minority dancers. Um, and I just wondered if you could speak to that a little bit in terms of why do you believe that is? Well, I think first of all, I think it also depends on the location, you know, geographically, mm -hmm. where we are. Um, Tallahassee is not a large um, dance town per se. Um, most of our dancers are locally from high school, junior high school, a few college. But what's important is that, you know, what we see is what inspires us. Mm -hmm. And I say that because at the age of 14 is when I first saw the Dance Suite of Harlem mm -hmm. um, in Hampton, Virginia at Hampton Institute. And I had never seen people of color on stage. Wow. Of anything, women of color with brown legs and a tutu because you open a book of any, any book and you see Caucasian ballerinas mm -hmm. and with pink tights. Mm -hmm. Now the whole purpose of the brown um, uh, tights is because Mr. Mitchell, the director of Dance in Harlem, believed that we should have one's, one's tone because there are different shades of brown. Yes, there are. So there are different shades of brown on that stage. So that inspired me to saying, okay, that person's up there so I can do that. Mm -hmm. If they can do it, I can do it. And believe it or not, that's what changed my life. Hmm. Okay. Wow, that's wonderful. So do you all get to um, work with children here locally at all? Well, we do have a program that's called <clears throat> Dance Chance, okay. which is an outreach program, which, which, is, which is doing quite wonderful. And the um, director of that program, Mary Rebecca, she just went to New York and did a, a, a seminar, uh, an intensive um, uh, for Jacques Jambois Institute. So she's excited to come back and to explore and to bring all the information back to what she has, that she's learned in New York to the community. That'll be great. I think that I'm, a, I'm really big on exposure and I think Absolutely. if the children could get exposed to dance, I mean, like I said, I've been here for almost 30 years and that was my first time going to the Tallahassee Ballet. And I think if others were able to experience it, they would also be um, inspired and um, maybe want to get involved in some way. And, and you know, and that's what it's about. And, and, I, and I've said this a lot, um, and I go back, and a lot of people have heard this story before. We were fortunate enough to open a theater in Johannesburg, South Africa. Really? And our opening night was down Nelson Mandela. Oh my god. And gosh. he made a statement. He said, um, the wonderful thing about the arts is that you can go to the theater and sit for an hour or two and forget about the troubles of the world. Mm, yes. Him saying that meaning the arts ignite the mind. Mm -hmm. So that became the slogan for the Dance Theater of Harlem Community and Outreach and Education Program, that the arts ignite the mind. The arts ignite And just the mind. what you said earlier in regards to going to the theater and you were engaged, mm -hmm. that's what it's about. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to take another break. But when we come back, we want to talk a little bit more about you and your experience with the Dance Theater Harlem and what you plan to do in the future with the Tallahassee Ballet. Great, thank you. I became and chose me to for that ballet and a couple of weeks later I was on tour. And one of my first tours was in Europe. Was Europe. Wow. And so I was there for the, the, uh, the This portion of Conversations with Nicole is sponsored by Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare. On today's 
Medical Moment, we are talking about prostate cancer. I have with me Dr. Joseph Camps, a urologist with Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare. Welcome, Dr. Camps. All right, thank you. So we're talking about prostate cancer. What is it, who does it affect, and how do we treat it? Well, prostate cancer is a disease of the male organ, the prostate gland, which lies between the bladder and the urethra, and it's pretty much hidden, but you can get any anatomy book and look it up, but really the, it's a, it's a gland that really is involved with fertility. Uh, in other words, it uh, produces the semen mm -hmm. in order for men to be able to, to father children. So um, it's, um, it's an important organ, but certainly um, you can, can live without it but um, it, it can develop prostate cancer, which is why we're talking about that today. Okay, and how does one get screened for prostate cancer? Well, I think first of all, um, well years ago, we used to have screening clinics. Mm -hmm. um, and so the U.S. Preventative Task Force has sort of changed the guidelines. And they're basically suggesting that we don't really have a screening process unless you have a family history of prostate cancer. Okay. Uh, and if you do, I think you should start screening at about age 40. And uh, in black males, for instance, um, it's likely that they'll have a more aggressive cancer and mm -hmm. they're 60% more likely to develop prostate cancer than their counterparts wow. uh, in Europe and, and white males uh, and non-Hispanic uh, males. So um, it's... Um, it's something that really needs to be uh, paid attention to because um, the American Cancer Society uh, estimates that there will be 161,000 cases diagnosed uh, in 2017 and approximately 30,000 deaths. So wow. it warrants uh, some attention in my opinion. It absolutely does. So how would one get treatment? Well, how would a man get treated if he's diagnosed with prostate cancer? Well, first of all, um, one of the things I, I do want to point out is that many times men don't have symptoms until it's too late. Mm -hmm. uh, they can have urinary frequency, uh, blood in the urine. Unfortunately, if they have bone pain, that could mean that the, the cancer has metastasized. But the one thing I think that needs to be done is a, a PSA, um, which is prostate-specific antigen, and it's excreted only by the prostate cancer cells or the prostate tissue itself. And if that's elevated, um, one would then come in probably for a digital rectal exam, uh, followed by a transrectal ultrasound of the prostate. And once that's determined if there are abnormalities on the ultrasound, um, it's usually biopsied, mm -hmm. and then the pathology sent to, I'm, I'm sorry, and then the specimen sent to pathology for them to evaluate the aggressiveness of the cancer, and then that's when the decision-making starts. I will tell you, however, um, sort of in this new uh, age of uh, technology, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, mm -hmm. is becoming a way to diagnose prostate Isn't cancer, it? and that's on the rise, and... Uh, I think some of the information in, uh, is still preliminary in terms of being able to completely diagnose it on an imaging study versus having tissue. I'm sort of old school. I like the pathologist to take a look at the tissue. Gotcha. If there's something that you could tell my viewers in closing, what would you tell them about prostate cancer? I would tell them that, particularly in black males, that it's, it's common, uh, it's more aggressive, I think when men reach the age of 60, they ought to have a digital rectal exam and probably a PSA. Uh, if you have a family history, I would start screenings at around age 40. Okay, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Stay tuned for more conversations. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that medical moment with Dr. Joseph Camps. Before our break, I was talking with our special guest, the artistic director, of the Tallahassee Ballet, Mr. Tyrone Brooks. So Tyrone, we were talking about how dance and um, the Tallahassee Ballet specifically can foster creativity, can foster a, a great experience, that exposure. And we talked a little bit about diversity, but we also talked about you in terms of your experience with the Dance Theater of Harlem. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, um I will say this, and, and honestly, um, my life with the Dance Theater of Harlem, my career, 
it's, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. um, it opened up so many doors for me. Um, I joined the Dance Theater Program at the age of 18. Oh, wow. I was very fortunate to go to New York on a full scholarship to the Dance Theater Program School. And during that time, there were members of the, of the company that were leaving, so I was chosen from the school to learn a particular ballet, which is from a uh, choreographed by a European choreographer, um, Glenn Tetley, okay. in which I learned. So Glenn Tetley came and he chose me to, for that ballet, and a couple of weeks later, I was on tour. Mm -hmm. And one of my first tours was in Europe. Was Europe. Wow. And so therefore, I was there for the, the, uh, the, the wedding of Princess Diana. So was this at the age of 18? This was 18, 18, 19, yes. Wow. So, um, you know, just being, having, having that experience, seeing the world, and Mr. Mitchell was very much a taskmaster because, because of the name Dance Institute of Harlem. And he would always say, you hear the word Harlem, People think the negative, but mm -hmm. once you see this beautiful group of people mm -hmm. of color walk out, he demanded that we were up on current events, mm -hmm. that we were very articulate, so that we would dispel that norm. Yes. That, yes, these people of color are articulate, they speak well, they try to carry themselves. Mm -hmm. And then again, too, we are representing something much larger than ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. I know that the position here as the artistic director of the Tallahassee Ballet is what brought you to Tallahassee, but what keeps you here? Um, we have a wonderful, I, I work with a wonderful group of people. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired. Mm -hmm. um, I love young people. Um, when I see talent and what's even more so like any teacher, director, when you see something and you're like, they got it seeing the wheels roll. And then again, too, everything that I've asked for, for the most part, I've gotten. Good. And I consider that a blessing. So if you have a good thing, why give it up? Mm -hmm. I have a wonderful um, artistic team that we work well, extremely well together, where it's That's to the great. point where we finish each other's sentences. Um, I will say that the board of directors and the executive director have always been very supportive of what I want in my vision. Okay. And that makes a huge difference because therefore I can always say, okay, I can, I, I, because I'm a visionary. Okay. And as long as I, I see, tell that. As, see, as long as I see movement, I'm okay. Is it moving fast enough for the most part? No, uh -huh. but that comes with being patient. And I'm learning that even till this day. Mm, good, 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 good. So what inspires you? People, I'm inspired by the dancers. Um, I will say I, abs I love my company, mm -hmm. and um, I'm constantly, I'm a workaholic. I'm constantly thinking of ways to better them because I, it is my responsibility. I want them to have just as much this, that I have. You know, I was able to see the world at such a young age mm -hmm. I was able to work with the greatest people to have certain experiences. I want them to have the same thing because I always say to them, because they're young even more so, under the roof of the Tallahassee Valley, you are protected. Mm. Once you leave here, it's a whole different world out mm -hmm. there. And, uh, and, not, and people aren't always that nice. It can be, people can be very cold. Yeah. So therefore, yes, I will hug them I will praise them, but at the same time, I, strong, I, I have a very strong hand mm -hmm. because I look at them as my children. Mm -hmm. They're an extension of you. They're an extension of me. And I'm a product of Arthur Mitchell. Okay. Well, I just want to thank you for the wealth of knowledge that you've shared with us today. Looking forward to more from the visionary and seeing what your vision is. Our food is here. So this is all the conversation we have time for today. Tallahassee Ballet, you definitely want to check them out. Thank y'all for joining us on Conversations with Nicole. Thank you. Now through September 27, mention you saw Madison Social on Conversations with Nicole and receive half off a BLT dip. Madison Social is located in College Town at 705 South Woodward Avenue in Tallahassee. 
We'd like to thank our guest, Tyrone Brooks, Artistic Director of the Tallahassee Ballet, for sharing his experience and perspective on the performing art of ballet. Join us next week at Masa Restaurant for a discussion on foster care resources with Thomas Fair of My Jump Vault and Mike Williams of My Jump Start. I am Nicole Everett. This is Conversations with Nicole, where we're connecting the community through conversations. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that medical moment with Dr. Joseph Camp. Tyrone, I need to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay.